a journalist? What's a journalist? A person who disseminates information. A person who disseminates information. That's a very uh, intellectual definition and appropriate. Uh, I have a different definition for a journalist. It's someone who writes history on a daily basis premised largely on hearsay. Because you weren't there. You're trying to get it right. So let's do some counting. How many dots? Tell me. I agree. How many dots are in this one? Oh, wait a minute. How many dots are in this one? Really? How many dots are in this one? How many? Really? How many dots are on this one? Really? And how many dots are on this one? You just have no idea what you're looking at. Because things change. So what are we going to do for our hour together? We're going to do this. Here's the cartoon. The angel says to the parachutist, no, see, this is your ripcord. That's just a loose thread. People who come to my office, or people who have legal issues, or have to deal with the First Amendment, have to distinguish between rip cords and loose threads. Things that help you and things that don't. Ways you make mistakes and ways you avoid making mistakes. That's the real challenge, isn't it? So the real challenge is, of course, rights are in balance, but we have to look at the First Amendment. The First Amendment of the United States Constitution, my topic is, know your First Amendment rights. So let's look at the First Amendment. Because the First Amendment talks about rights in balance. Congress shall make no law, and among other things, abridging the freedom of speech. I teach constitutional law at Hastings College of Law, and it's about freedom of religion, it's about the right to assemble, it's a teachable assembly. But you know what? It, for our purpose, it's about Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. That's what it says, right? Like one dot, or two dots, or four. So let's try one out. Uh, how many of you have been to an airport in the last two years? You have. When you went to the airport, before you got on the plane, did you have to pass through anything? What did you pass through? A metal detector with all those TSA people hovering all around. Hey, try this next time you go to the airport. Don't really. Go to the airport, and as you're walking through the metal detector, turn to the TSA person and say, this is a great metal detector, but will they catch my bomb? <laughs> Just say that. And by the way, if you have a bomb, you've committed an act of conduct. First Amendment doesn't protect that. First Amendment does not protect your right to throw a rock through the window, even though, as you say it, I hate, you know, San Jose State. But in fact, you don't have a bomb. You're just joking. Can they arrest you? You say yes so fast. Why? Inciting fear. Inciting fear. Congress, who made the law that says you can't joke about bombs in airplanes or near airports? Who made that law? I'm going to tell you who made the law. Congress, that's a law that restricts freedom of speech. You say because it'll inspire fear. I agree with you. That's why we all know you can't do it. Hey, get, I'll make it worse. On the, flight, on the flight itself, press the call button and say, where do I store the bomb? You'll inspire attention. Hey, but wait a minute. Uh, you're not at the airport. On the way to the airport, you turn to your friend and say, hey, wouldn't it be fun to have a bomb on a plane? Can you be arrested for that? How about, let's make it even easier. Before you go to the airport and get in the car, you will take a shower. And in the shower, you're just one of those people who likes to sing, so you sing a song about bombs in airports. I love having bombs in airports. Can they arrest you for that? No, because the right in balance, your right in balance, the need to be free from things that disturb things, doesn't apply. So when we think about the First Amendment, we have to think about rights in balance. Rights against each other. 